Neighbors, welcome back. This is Daniel. This is Katie. And this is the Future Neighbor Podcast. Podcast. Neighbors, it's been a while since we've connected with you, since we've talked with you. Indeed. And what was the reason? We took a break because of the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were um, competing and it was very tough, you know, to fit in a podcast. While we were busy cheering and <laughs> how just our mental space was just not there. <laughs> <laughs> that's such an excuse. The Olympics was such a long time ago. Um, you know, I think that's what it is, though. It's like if you do something and you got it going, like as soon as you take a little break from it, it's so easy to break habits. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's why we have just so much respect for the people who can just do things continuously. Yeah, like there's some people that I listen to podcasts. Like uh, for some time, I used to listen to Bill Burr, who is an American comedian. And he has like the Monday morning podcast. He's consistently doing it. And he does podcasts by himself. Oh, wow. Like he's just talking to himself. He makes he makes uh, sound effects. He like talks away from the mic like this. And he comes back and like, <laughs> he does all these things. It's like a one man show. It's so impressive. Like when you have to create the energy and bounce it back against yourself <laughs> for an hour. I think it's so impressive. You tried doing that a long time ago. And <laughs> yeah, I just felt <laughs> like, work out. <laughs> yeah, I felt like I was getting more like serious and serious and serious. I was like, who would listen to this? So I turned it. Yeah, I, I didn't upload it yeah um but this back and forth yeah there's like who else uh, are there any other podcasters that you listen to um you I, don't listen to that really podcast anymore no yeah, yeah. just future neighbor podcast <laughs> do you really listen to our podcast i do after you upload them ah. and somehow it's it's just me, but I, I enjoy listening to our podcast. <laughs> you know, you know <laughs> that's interesting. Like, I remember when I was growing up, I would hear about some actor or actresses that have never seen the completed film. Oh. So they would be like a huge star in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'd be so perplexed. I was like, why wouldn't you watch that great film? Um, I think they're just too critical to yeah, themselves. So they yeah. only look at all the faults in them. Their acting or... Yeah, and that's the same thing. When I listen to the podcast and I listen to my voice, yeah, oh, like you're saying the same things. Oh, look at those ums and the butts. Like, oh, turn this off. And I can't like listen to it for long. <laughs> then you know, when I listen to some of my friends like give feedback. Well, maybe it's because I'm listening to my friends give feedback, but <laughs> they all seem to enjoy it. So, um, so yeah, there I said it. Um, again, now I'm getting self conscious about it. <laughs> Every time I say um, you gotta tap me. Oh, as if I'm I'm already good at not saying um. <laughs> um, oh, there we go again. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's the wrong word. No, no, no. Ah, uh, what's the Korean word for um? Did you did you take ever did you ever take it? <laughs> this podcast is messed up for me. Did you ever take any public speaking classes? No. Or any training. No, but you know, we really wanted to improve our public speaking skills. So yeah. we considered going to like a toast. Oh, Toastmasters. Toast, toastmasters, like those meetups, you mm. know, at one time. Didn't end up happening. But <laughs> yeah, I I would be totally interested in trying one of those sessions <laughs> and upping our skills. Because yeah. this is like a life skill. You know? It is, it is. I think... Like why I wanted to do the Toastmasters is my level of how I present myself or how I present myself in English versus how I present myself in Korean is like <laughs> it's such a big gap. That's why I wanted to take oh, Toastmasters. Oh, so you wanted to do it in Korean. In Korean. Oh, I want to do it in English. Oh, so. So we can't be in the same class then. <laughs> I thought you were going to be in the same class as me and support me. <laughs> I feel pretty comfortable in English. Yeah, just from the consulting days, like doing presentations in front of people and stuff. I've yeah. gone through the, yeah, I've gone through that. So I, I, I don't have that much of a fear mm. of, of, of speaking. But strangely, when I'm in Korean, um, I think I'm conversationally fluent. But like when it comes to like official uh, positions. Or where, business speaking. Yeah, or business speaking. 
little bit of casual always slips in and then I get self-conscious about it. And then my train of thought goes to, oh, oh, am I not being respectful? And then I lose my subject of what I was talking about. And then it messes me up. So I want to get that out of the way. <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, even today, yeah. you know, you were calling up one of the um, companies to return a product. Remember? You just shared that incident. Oh, which one? What are you talking about? No, because you were talking to them like one of the CS. Oh. And you wanted to return a product. Oh. And then <laughs> <laughs> you didn't really get what that person said, a particular word. And <laughs> Well, okay. So but there's kind of multiple aspects to that conversation. Yeah, so I ordered something and uh, I said, oh, again. Anyway, there's going to be a lot of us. It's and fine. The guy, yeah, and the guy was like, yeah, but hey, yo. I think you got no, trained. No, let's do the dialogue together. I think I can imitate him because I've listened to those CS calls so okay. many times. Okay. 네, 고객님, 안녕하십니까? <laughs> 아, 네, 안녕하세요. 제가 어제 주문한 것이 그 사이즈가 잘못 들어와서 어, 좀 교환하고 싶어서 전화드립니다. 아, 네, 그러면 네, 교환, 교환 가능하고요. 교환 진행해 드리겠습니다. 아, 네, 그러면 받은... 받았던 거는 받게 두면 될까요? 네, 그거는 저희가 증정해 드리겠습니다. 네? <웃음> 증정? Oh, but what he said was, uh, 증정, 증정으로 드리면 괜찮을까요? Oh. Okay, so say it like that. Oh, but none of our listeners are going to understand our conversation. It's alright, it's alright, it's alright. 네, 증정으로 해드려도 괜찮을까요? My reaction was like, Oh, 네. 네, 그러면 증정으로 해 드리겠습니다. 아, 근데 제가 그러면 받은 거는 어디다 두면 될까요? <웃음> 네, 증정으로 해 드리겠습니다. 증정? <웃음> <웃음> 네, 증정. <웃음> yeah, so basically yeah, the way explain. he said the way he said 증 증정? No, you should explain. So you wanted to return Oh well, you you, you wanted to make a claim because the one of the products that you received it came in a smaller size. Oh, uh, but I wanted to uh, get an exchange for the larger size. So I was asking, what do I do with the smaller product you gave me? And I said, should I put it outside my door for the delivery man to pick it up? Uh, and then the guy was use like, the word 증정. 증정. We will do 증정. Yeah, which like I know the word. But it didn't occur to me in my Korean American mind. Oh. But he said it in a strange way. He said, "증정 드리면 될까요?" Like, okay, only people in Korea know. There's like a. Um, it kind of feels like you're it, talking to a robot. Yeah, there's a robotic way of doing customer service that offends no one, but I particularly hate it. Yeah. Like in America, a lot of times when you talk with someone, they talk to you like a human being. <laughs> but in Korea, sometimes they talk to you like you're seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That tone. I yeah, mean, yeah, people, yeah. I don't even need to translate. You'll know. Like, it's really just like, oh, okay, okay. You know, yeah. it's like, um, would you like a free upside or upgrade with that? No, okay. Well, there's the next customer. Okay, do you need anything else? Like that kind of artificial AI talk. That shit drives me crazy. <laughs> I'm a human being. Just talk to me. <laughs> anyway, I might just be ranting, but I didn't catch his word because I was thinking in my mind, who trained this guy, and why are people getting trained to talk this way? <laughs> that was the thought that was already going in my mind. Yeah. And when he said "jingjang I was like "jingjang." <laughs> what the heck is "jingjang"? I was like. <laughs> Whatever. I thought I thought it was like another formal way of returning my money rather than through credit card or whatever. And I said yes. And then I asked him. Okay. I asked him again. What, what do should I do? I do with the the smaller uh, item that I got? And he was like, Which is like, is it okay if I just gift it to you? And I'm like, but what do I do? And he was so confused. And I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we talking about this? I, 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 I got lost in trying to reenact how he talked to me. What was the point? No, because, and then you you said, um, oh, you said something like, my Korean isn't so good. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Can you explain what that means? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, 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 I was like
Chingjungi wasn't this shit guy. But then if you hear that in Korean, that's a, just a fluent person. It's like me being like, sorry, I don't know what the word gifts mean. Can you explain that again? <laughs> he thinks I'm making fun of him now. <laughs> And he was like, he was like, Chingjung, hmm, what are you going to say? Hmm, hmm, hmm. I was like, ah, Chingjung. He's like, no, I was like, ah, Chingjung. I was like, ah, Chingjung. He's like, no. And we were like, he's thinking I'm making fun of him, but I'm not. Anyway. Long story short, I was like, "Yes, please, it's fine. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the chingjong." But anyway, well, that's not why I want it. I mean, that's not public speaking. That's more of just I don't no, know. It's no, all scramble. No, no, that's my life in Korea. That, no, that we wanted to say because you said you wanted to take a toast class in Korean, yeah. and then how your Korean is still like not like fluent. I no. guess. I know why I did it because I got kind of traumatized because one time when I was in a um, I think my company sent me out to play a round of golf with these business executives in Korea. Yeah. And then at the end, there was like a big bank- banquet dinner and the microphone went around to explain what company you're from and also to say your name and just a little bit oh. about yourself. Yeah. And everyone is going in Korean. Yeah. And I was <laughs> getting, getting so sweaty, nervous. Right? I mean, if it's in English, I'll do it now. It's like, hi, my name is Daniel. I represent ABC Corp. Um, I had an amazing time playing golf with you. Okay. I thought as a young guy I would outscore, but hey, there's wisdom in age, and uh, I need to go take some lessons. Uh-huh. That's suave, suave, it's <laughs> simple, very simple. Let's do it in Korean. Okay, just uh, uh just. Oh wait, wait, I can do it now because now you're putting me on the spot, and I feel like I have to like. Okay, but, but how it really went then yeah, when I got it, the mic, <clears throat> I was like, "안녕하세요." <laughs> <laughs> sound like a little kid. <laughs> uh, 제 이름은 오지훈입니다. Uh, <clears throat> 골프를 제가 오늘 좀 즐겁게 <laughs> 쳤는데요. It, it's just I sound like a f- I sound, I sound like, like a little boy. I sound like a little kid. Yeah. But do you know where that comes from? Is that well, obviously I I grew up in the states, so I always grew up um, doing the reciprocation of what my mom's commands are. 밥 먹었어? 네, 엄마. And like, whenever yeah, yeah, I got yeah. the phone from relatives, I always knew you have to speak 존댓말 really respectfully. Yeah. So as soon as like my my grandma would call, you know, with my boys, I'd be like, hey, hey, turn the TV off. 여보세요? 아, 네, 할머니. And my pitch would just go up like six, six octaves, you know, just to stay respectfully nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's always been habit habitized into my mind. And so I need to shed that as I get older. But I think that takes time. That's why I want to do a Toastmaster. Or maybe I'll practice in front of you. Yeah. Like I'll do, I'll like put together a little speech and then you can correct me. But you always laugh at me. As soon as I say something, you laugh at me. So it doesn't <laughs> yeah, work. That, that, that's not really working. <laughs> yeah. But do you feel like your personality kind of changes when you switch, switch language? Like English versus Korean. Yeah, definitely. I just I, I I think in English, I can present myself accurately, and I also I think I can turn very combative quickly. Oh, okay. Like switch. Yeah. But in Korean, it's always a 안녕하십니까. <laughs> <laughs> it's always very friendly. It's very hard for me to be direct yeah. and. Com- combative yeah combative well, is not that, the right word but, but like just very like stern it's very hard for me to be stern yeah. to people i don't know whereas in english i could switch on a dime yeah 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 so but i feel like that's not that's kind of similar for me as well that's not because your korean is not fluent i think korean language overall is like very polite and it's very indirect yeah you, indirect. it's just like japanese when i was studying japanese and you never reply no Exactly. I think it's going to be difficult. Yeah, yeah. It's like, hey, you want to meet up next week? I think it might be difficult. Yeah. That's how always how you answer. I or you say I think, yeah, I think it might be or I expect it might be. you will never say it's difficult. But actually I use that to my advantage sometimes, especially when I'm talking with some of our suppliers for Gochujar on the phone. I'd be like, "No, that's a problem for me. Mm-hmm. You need to get it to me now, ASAP. You promised yeah. delivery date that." 아니야, 아니야. 그렇게 하면 안 돼요. Oh, like, oh, oh. 아니, 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 그렇게 하지 않을 거고요. Mm. 이렇게 할 거예요. And they'll be like, oh shit. Then they will be probably taken back. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's not that's very not common. That's not how you talk. Yeah. Korea. Yeah. So, 
But anyway, that's. But that bothers me for me too. Like some, like most sometimes at work, Mm -hmm. I just want to say like, this works for me. This doesn't work for me. Like I. I wish I could be more explicit, but mm. sometimes I feel like the language kind of bars me from being more explicit. And if I go with the really explicit tone, then I know that I'm going to come off as being maybe a little bit like offensive or rude or too strong. Yeah. And yeah, I don't feel comfortable with that. So I always, I kind of stick with the language. You can never say rule. just no, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It can just... You can never say anio. You mm-hmm. can never type that. Because mm-hmm. if you just type anio, which means no in, in Korean, the other person might be like, oh, this person's really mad at me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, Like just to even give you a very simple example, let's say on Friday, I'm going to take a day off, right? Mm. In English, you would just say, yeah, I will take a day off, right? In Korean, most people would say, I think I'm going to take a day off. Even uh, though they know for sure that they will take a day off, mm. yeah. Or, yeah, I think I might. I will. I think I will have to take a day off. That 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 translated into Korean. It has to Korean. be very passive, right? Mm, something like that. Yeah. So I think about that difference a lot. And also, even in writing too, I feel like in Korea we use a lot of those. Not just emojis, but those squigglies. And then the exclamation mark a lot. That was just on my mind. Yeah. Like when I was living in the States, I never used to use the squiggly line. Mm. But when I'm talking with anyone in Korean, like I have to give those carrot marks. those (laughs) Like a smiley face. Those little uh, mountain peaks. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And like I have to give a little smiley face. Yeah. Because... It's customary. Because the person who's sending me a message who's a lot older is They're like... so friendly. It's like, oh, I, um, we deliver the packages. Tinka, tinka. <laughs> <laughs> In my mind, it sounds like... Tinka, tinka. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I see myself... Yeah. writing emails and messages to my friends in the states with, with like, the squiggly with the squigglies now, and the yeah. tinka, tinka. me too i got used to it yeah my and one of my friends was like man your texts are so friendly <laughs> and i was kind of like what and he was like you put so many squigglies and i was like oh man i've transformed i've yeah. changed but i feel like if you don't put those squigglies mm. then you sound really cold in korean it's when just, it's written in korean that's, that's the culture it's just it's too direct yeah you gotta put in those squigglies even when i talk to your mom yeah. i put in so many squigglies <laughs> like it, i could just say there i guess yeah but yes, that I understand. sounds so cold yeah or sounds like you're angry it sounds so matter of fact yeah right so i, was, I would go there, i guess me that squiggly i was go nep I guess me that tinka tinka squiggly squiggly. Yeah, then I read it as <laughs> I guess me da. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but those are one of those things that you just have to read a book. I forget what it says, but uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast. No one cares what you think in your head. You just got to go with the culture. Mm. I think so. We were having this very interesting talk and I wanted to bring it back up in our podcast. Like when we were waiting for climbing, I was kind of talking to you about that voice in your head. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. is the voice in your head, do you think that voice um do you think I I I'm just because I only have my brain to see the world. Yeah. Is your voice more positive or or negative uh, is it a positive voice in your head or a negative voice in your head like throughout most of the days uh, mm. for example you ordered a we ordered that uh, starbucks reserve drink and then they didn't make it for us there we had to go wait at the starbucks reserve like bar center yeah and it was taking it, it was taking like 10 minutes right yeah in my mind I'm, my mind, my yeah, ego. Yeah, I thought you turned too so Korean. You were so pali pali, and you were e- getting annoyed. My, e- <laughs> my ego. Okay, sorry for the cussing. My ego was like, "What the fuck is taking so long? <laughs> God damn! Just put the foam on. Like, how hard does this take? Just give it. Let me go." Like most of the times in my head, you're like that. That, yeah. that my ego. I don't yeah. know if I, it's the right word to call it my ego. Uh, I should. Your re- mind. 
my mind is always a negative talk. Ah. Uh. And I was thinking, isn't most people's talk negative? And then in your logical brain, not your subconscious brain, the one that's negative, in your logical brain, most of the times you fight that negative thought. Like for me, I'd be like, wait a minute, but that guy's probably not making that much um, of a wage. I shouldn't be that critical on him. I'm sure what's the rush for him if he makes this quickly for us? He doesn't care that we have to go to the gym. He doesn't <laughs> care that I'm like dying to go climbing. He's just doing his job properly. And I'm sure he doesn't want to do pali pali. Good for him. And Or I it fight. just takes so long. I know, but what I'm saying is that that's my logical side, which battles with my inner conscious, which is tends to be negative. Uh. And I just thought in my mind, is it just me or is most people's When you don't bring that logical side, is it just runaway negative? Oh, uh, yeah. I think now that I think about it, I think they're always fighting a lot. Right? Yeah. Like for example, we went into the gym, and you see a girl who bring who comes in with a very like, um, uh, just a revealing yoga, very skimpy, very skimpy yoga top. Yeah. Right. And then in your mind, it is does in your mind be like, who does that bitch think she is wearing that? Does it? <laughs> Don't, <laughs> Katie, don't lie to no, me. Don't, no. don't, don't, doesn't that pop up in your mind? In your, in your subconscious mind? No, I, I think it's just like it catches my attention. And I'm like, hmm. Mm, what is that? You lie. You're, you're, trying to, you're trying to just like pretend to be nice on, on my... But then in my logical mind, I go, remember I told you? Yeah. I told you, wow, good for her in Korea. Yeah, in a repressed society that's so conservative, she's coming out. And if I was a girl, and that's what makes her feel confident. If that makes her feel confident, sexy, and she wants to like you know, if that makes her feel sexy, yeah. good for her. Where else would she show that other yeah, than yeah, like yeah. a gym? And I, th that's what I said to you, right? Mm. But then that's not my inner thought, right? Actually, that, that that whole like who does that bitch? That's not actually my true thought. I don't care no, for no, that. No, no, no. I'm pretending to be your inner. No, thought. no, 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 really? no, no, no. I don't go to that. As I, a guy, I didn't I don't go judge. to that extent. Right. But like, uh, well, today, not today, but the other day, you know, now, um, my yoga teacher, yeah, she was like uh, showing this move, mm. like dem demoing this move before us, mm. and <laughs> like her yoga pants. I, it was almost see-through. I was quite stunned. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've seen like, you know, it's very normal nowadays to wear tight, you know, yoga pants. But the, it was almost see-through and almost felt like I could see some spots. Like it was that thin, the material, as mm -hmm. well as the color. Mm -hmm. So I was like, wow, isn't that a little bit too much? Like it's kind of uncomfortable to my eye. And then, but then, like, soon, the other side of me is like, well, if that's what she wants to wear, <laughs> and she's a yoga teacher, yeah. I mean, who cares, you know? There's only girls in this studio, too. So, I, like you said, I think they're, a lot of the times, they're, like, both voices from both sides. It's conflicting. But then, yeah, hopefully the positive one takes over. <laughs> Anyway, I well, is that what you wanted to say? Well, I don't know. I just thought it was. I was just very curious about. So, so I was going a lot because you know we had to wait in line. So I was just sometimes I just let my mind wander, and I was just thinking that if I know that my inner mind is tends to be negative, then I should my logical mind should be a little bit more optimistic to balance that out. Yeah, I think it's the logical mind, like you said. Yeah. Or maybe more sympathetic mind that has emotions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, that's a good point. Yeah, because I know... Maybe my the logical mind is the negative one. No, for me, it's definitely the optimistic and, like, it, when I turn on my logical mind, yeah, I'm always very, like, like happy and more op optimistic and, mm -hmm. like, friendly talking and, like... But it's always a, a battle of the two. That impulsive mind that's a little bit... Or negative that inner mind that i can't control yeah <laughs> that one is always um assessing situations but i think it's natural it's always trying to protect me or it's trying to yeah yeah but if you don't control that and you don't let your logical mind combat with that mm. you could I, i could see how my perception of reality could change really quickly 
Yeah. Right. So if I don't talk with people, like let's say that um, I'm yeah. one of those otaku in Japan or those people, hikimori, I think is the term of people who just don't interact with society and just inside their heads. Yeah, just at home all the time. You get like turning on your logical mind usually comes when you're interacting. interacting with people, right? For example, I could be at a restaurant sitting down and waiting for my food and I could be like, what the f- is going on with this restaurant screw that goddamn waiter she giving all the people like where's my f-? like that's going and then as soon as the waiter comes like how you yeah, doing yeah, hon yeah, yeah. i'll be like oh i'm fine yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm fine yeah yeah good right yeah that's the logical mind kicking in yeah, right yeah yeah and so wakes you up it wakes you up to your craziness but yeah. i guess going back to the point is that if you don't bump in and have interactions with people that illogical mind which my hypothesis is negative for most people it just runs wild yeah, and so your perception of reality starts becoming um, uh, very skewed from reality. Your perception of it becomes very distant from what's true. Yeah, which is usually just neutral, mm. right? So that waiter's just doing her job. That guy at Starbucks doesn't care. He's just doing his thing. But in your mind, is their negative mind? Just like, oh, screw this. Why is he not making the uh, uh, making the situation? comfortable for me for me for me that thing always wants everything yeah. for me 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 yeah, yeah. right uh, uh, you see a friend who's let's say invested into a house you guys are good friends and he let's say he his house Made went like, up in value and let's say like half a million in a year his house <laughs> value went up and <laughs> you could be like god damn that guy never did anything in life fuck <laughs> fuck god damn my luck god damn it right and then when you see him he's like dude that's awesome <laughs> you deserve it right you deserve it, right? Mm. But I guess my whole point is that I think that's normal. Yeah, it's normal, and 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 when we're in line, but you will never say that in person or out loud, right? Of course, but it's recognizing that your mind yeah, tends to be run wild like that, and that that's why you need discipline. Mm. You need to control your mind. Yeah, yeah. and one of the good ways is to um, facilitate discussions with other people or mm. just having interactions. Because just by the act of me talking to you, that negative or that subconscious mind turns off. Yeah. When we're climbing or when we're doing physical activity, that crazy mind turns off because your physical body is focused on just that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That That's was, a good point. So whenever you find yourself in bed hating <laughs> on others, on your good friends and 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 or or this because it's all society. natural yeah or you feel like you're losing control of your life remember that's your monkey mind throwing poop everywhere it's yeah. it's just running because it it yeah 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 that's a really good point and i think for me a lot of the times it's like me thinking about what other people will think about me and like and at work too like i'll say something or say something and then like, I, I kind of, my own mind sometimes go go wild about, oh, what the other teammates will think about this that I said. Yeah, and it's usually your subconscious mind. Yeah, it's, it's not just like, in my mind. But it's negative, right? Yeah, it's negative. It's and always I, negative, right? Yeah, and your I can't ne- get that off. Your mind is never like, Katie, wow, I bet they really liked what you said in the meeting. Or <laughs> right? like, it's never that then right? maybe if, if my tone was too strong exactly it goes back to negative well this happened for me actually on friday so i couldn't get that thought off my mind and it, it ran over to su- saturday but then luckily we had some engagements and like we went out right yeah like we were outside we were not at home so i think that helped a lot yeah and a good example of what you're talking about at work you used to tell me like man i'm doing so bad in my team like i don't think i like a, a good performer like yeah maybe i, I don't, don't belong feel, here i don't feel like i'm leveling up i'm like forever junior and then your company comes out and gives you a retention bonus <laughs> if you were that shitty why would they pay you a bonus to stay with the company right yeah. so your negative mind has taken your perception of your work so far from reality yeah yeah that was kind of right yeah yeah, reality check right and then that discussion and when they give you money to stay with our company hey here's a retention bonus that should give you a wake-up call wait a minute why am i thinking 
that um, X, Y, and Z is so bad when the company, obviously, they put their money where their mouth is. If they thought what your negative subconscious might thought they were, they would have been, Katie, <clears throat> are you sure you want to be working at this company? You would have had a whole different discussion. And, 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 and you naturally are a pessimistic. No, I think I'm a little bit. But you're changing. I'm too, I don't know if it's the right word, but I'm, I, a lot of times I feel I'm a little bit too humble. Mm. Bad way, I'm like very underrating myself. That's the one thing your mom hates. About me, yeah. yeah that you never talk about your successes or you never self-promote yourself and it drives your mom crazy. I know. And then it didn't... Well, my uh, my mom used to drive me crazy every time she said that because I just felt like I was doing the right thing. But then now, after 30 years, I start to get what she meant. So now... I feel like finally I've like woken up to that like talk and yeah, want to make a change about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, why do you think you never wanted to self-promote any of the successes you've No, had? I think, well, maybe my sign very cliche, but maybe I feel like women tend to be like less boosting of their own performance. Uh, like when I see around, even amongst my coworkers, I think people who are like me tend to have more like very conservative attitude mm. and we really like think about what we say. So that kind of sometimes works in a negative way where we don't talk enough or we don't demand enough and yeah, talk about our like performance enough. Yeah, that's that's a good example of a habit actually making an impact on what you do so you as a habit of not self-promoting yourself has become so habitified habitified that you actually think less of yourself yeah yeah what you true. probably thought was a virtue of being humble for example you went to a great school right very yeah. world famous school but you never talk about it you don't do this or that and then actually this is not a good example but let's say that for example in in your team you committed some code, but you don't talk about it or you don't do this. Mm. When it comes time towards performance review, no one knows what you did, yeah. but you think it's virtuous just to or, do it without telling Or I people. just feel like that's bragging for me when it's not bragging it's to not, other people. It's not. Maybe in my mind, it looks like bragging up until now. So like bragging is not good, right? So I'm like... No, but your okay. definition of bragging, like, okay, now you already know yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the big difference, but that's not bragging. Yeah, yeah. But anyway... But that's, I that's feel like that's also because I work in like a mostly male-dominated industry. So just naturally when you step into the meeting room, everybody, there's only two other women and the rest, eight people are all men and... I don't. I've never been on the other side where there are eight women and just two men, where I'm like the minority. <laughs> so. Or were you the majority? Yeah, where I'm the majority. Mm. So already, I'm feeling. I don't know how to describe it. But I already. I'm so used to this feeling, so it's kind of hard to describe. But already, I feel like I can't really. Like, I don't feel very identified. Is that the right word? I, I don't... You feel like a minority, you don't belong? Or, or if I speak something, if, or if I demand something already, I'm like, already I'm sticking out. Uh -huh. Because I'm the only two out of ten. Uh -huh. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Well... But, little pivot one thing that i'm really happy so sometimes because you know during covid you take calls and i could hear some of the calls and one habit that i really got you to stop doing was that uh you just did it <laughs> that laughter after you talk yeah what, what what did i used to call it i told you it's a nervous laughter which makes it you you're laughing to get agreement to get passive agreement from people like, um, guys, I propose that we move our meeting to next Wednesday. <laughs> That's all right, right? <laughs> You're basically trying to lower the, 
lower friction in agreement. Yeah. That's just an example, but exactly. yeah, you yeah. analyzed it really well. Yeah, and, and, I, then- and I told you, don't do that and be assertive because in the workplace, you're not there to be, make friends. And if you're forever laughing like that, people will treat you like a kid. They won't ever say, oh, yeah, I would happily want to work for Katie's team. Like she's a great leader. Because for, as a leader, you definitely want to, you yeah. know, you want to you want to show leadership, but like doing those like small laughter, it yeah, just yeah. signals that. Yeah. But there's little stuff like that. But. Yeah, but I have to admit, for the longest time, I felt really afraid and nervous about talking, even in like meetings. Like yeah. Just, just you know, nothing special, just regular meetings. Yeah, you're on a podcast that's listened to thousands by thousands of people. Yeah. But it feels different. But yeah, for the longest time, even until quite recently, I I felt really nervous. Just weekly meetings, I get like uh, my heart will kind of start beating when it comes to my turn. Uh-huh. Then, yeah, somehow like over the past months, I think I after you mentioned that and a few others, I think I really like put my mind to work at it. You know, I put even put posters on my on my PC. Yeah, you put a post-it note on your work computer that says, "Don't do the nervous laughter." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really put it into my conscious mind to work at it, and then, yeah, I think I got much better now. Yeah. But there's been a considerable shift in the way that you talk during the meetings, which I have to <laughs> paksu because I would say up until about uh, two months ago. <laughs> When you're in a group Zoom meeting, you sound like a junior. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, what do you think? Yeah, what do you do? Like, sorry, I'm just putting you under a spotlight, but I think it helps other people too. But now when I see in your meetings, much more assertive. Like, hey, I like this, I like that, and like that. And I think it's the, it's really good. Yeah. I think for the longest time, I just couldn't like really bear that... Th- um, the seriousness the tone mm. like when the atmosphere is serious and i'm talking i kind you of question did i do something wrong oh. or like, is there something that i said that like pissed somebody off mm. but everybody's just nobody's serious I mean, nobody's pissed it's, they're just listening but i just can't bear with that silence or bear with that no reaction uh. yeah so you want that quick feedback yeah. or initial response quickly. Yeah. Because you don't like the uncertainty of how someone may react to you. Yeah. Which all comes back to that you're ultra sensitive to how people perceive you. Yeah, that's true. Which you said from the beginning. Yeah. Right? So there yeah. so but now as you're getting older, you're like You have to develop the I don't care mentality. I don't care mentality. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to just hawk my own horn here, but <laughs> when I was at my company I really had a fuck you. I don't care. I I'll make this happen, and and you know I got promoted extremely fast, right? Good That's for fun. you. <laughs> oh, well, now this or is, you're born for the business. Now this is an example of me boasting for sure. <laughs> but yeah, I think people with the I don't care attitude actually do really well in the yeah, corporate I think setting. So yeah, but I they also flame out quickly. Too. <laughs> yeah. But there's also people who do the I don't care mentality, but they don't they they actually don't work well. So <laughs> that's faking the funk and you get caught quickly. But then I also got criticized quite a lot during my performance reviews that um uh y- you uh you have the lone wolf attitude. You have a lone <laughs> entrepreneur attitude and you're developing silos and you need to you need to share knowledge with team members and do this and do that and I was like, "All right, all right." All right. Uh, always that's the you like to go on your own path please help build others at the same and but that was actually a good learning too like once you get past like the analyst stage in the first four or five years of your career um, in most hierarchies company hierarchies then you start getting promoted based on your ability to uh, grow a team and be able to re- replicate your results via basically scale your results via team yeah. And I think that was the beauty of staying at a company um, to learn those skills. I think if you're at a company long enough to manage a team or lead a team, yeah, that is the pure beauty of being. That's the pure yeah. beauty. 
Like you need to be a team jang, a team lead, yeah, yeah, yeah. where you're not like the Korean style, where it's military. That's one way of leading a team, but it's actually the easiest. Yeah, authoritarian, right? But trying to do it in a kind of way, I think I still draw on a lot of those lessons learned. Like I used to have a team, a Russian team member, like um, European team member. All these personalities are so different. Indian. Indian, right? Um, Korean, and trying yeah. to get them to work together, and then people playing politics to show that they got results. The analysis, yeah. like that, and trying to go through that, and then that's actually <sighs> my kind of um, next goal. I want to try working in an international company where, like, I can where it's like more multicultural. Yeah. Well, they're always going to be like, please communicate yourself. You need to do more communication. <laughs> Everything is communication. I mean, her communication was weak. I didn't understand what she was saying, but she was being, you know, the microaggressions didn't really help either. We need more communication, Katie. Oh, really? Um, for your performance review. We love That's what so you funny. did, but we're going to keep your pay the same. And then, um, but it's all right. You're going to do better next time. Just more communication. More wow. Com Can you yeah. like that? You like that? <laughs> <laughs> no but uh yeah no but on a more serious note i did tell you right what? that uh, i want to work in a like a overseas company yeah you want to work for an international company and see how how, yeah. how different it is yeah well you know like in korea the it companies they like put in all these like um, measures to like make it less hierarchical and more like even level like so there's easier communication between management and the team members so one of that would be like you know the korean language is very hierarchical but um like in our company they got rid of all the um titles yeah for the employees so everybody else to you would call everybody else by their name which is very revolutionary by English name? No. Oh, well, there are companies like Kakao, they'll call it by English name, but our company, we call by just your first name. Really? Yeah. So even to the CEO. Let's say your CEO name is Miran. Miran Nim. We'll oh, just put Nim at the end. Ah, I see. And the CEO would call maybe the lowest rank staff member like Minsu Nim too. Uh, she would never call like actually, Minsu or. Did that actually work? I feel like that would actually be very beneficial instead of being like, uh, de, uh, or 대표님. The traditional way would be 대표님. You never be able to call their first name, right? Yeah, or 대리님, 과장님, yeah, 차장님. Were, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All those ranks. Yeah, you don't call them by their ranks. Yeah, but IT. There's some of these like big IT companies tried like putting in these measures to hoping that this would. Like make the company less hierarchical, mm. and in some ways I think it worked. But still, when it comes to like when we have like a meeting with somebody a little bit higher up or like head of the organization, and he comes into the Zoom meeting, then immediately the nobody starts. Nobody like nobody will call Mira name. They will change right back to Tepio name. Right? No, 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 no. Everybody will call him, but it's just that the naming. People stick to the naming rule, but like you would, you would think that like this would kind of make it easier for people to like, like talk to that person, talk to the CEO, or ask questions, or like you know have a more like lateral flow of conversation. But it doesn't happen like that. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's a big improvement. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. Uh, one thing, guys. Uh, that I've been watching lately on uh, YouTube at nighttime when I'm doing some like menial work is uh, there's a channel called Wonder. Type in Wonder, W-O-N-D-E-R. And then there's a series called I Should Have Died. What? Wonder, I Should Have Died. Oh, or, I wonder I should have died. No, it's just called Wonder. And then the series is like I Should Have Died or I, w I Was Gonna Die or... Something very close. And it's just like documentaries of, of incidents where people were so close to death. Oh. Like, for example, they got attacked by bears in a national park. Or their boat <sighs> broke down in the middle of the ocean. 
or a hiker goes and then a flash flood and then his arm gets caught in a rock and the oh mountain my God. and then like really really traumatic yeah moments. like these are not fictional. just like one yeah it's not fictional and it's not these one off things that well I, I could survive that too no like a series of unfortunate events keeps happening and you're like wait a minute is this even real like how could that person had this much misfortune misfortune and um it's really fun <laughs> it's so random <laughs> yeah i know i was just thinking about it but it's really fun now there's a little things that i've learned from it number one if uh if you get lost like in a forest or in a desert or in a canyon somewhere and you hear helicopters yeah they'll never save you <laughs> oh in every They'll one of those episodes to, like oh. after the day two like their water's running out and they hear and they go we're here help help oh. help the helicopter never sees them oh wow never sees them it oh. never sees them because um they just can't from a helicopter you're, you it's very hard to see someone yeah you like, have to make fire yeah, there was one episode where a guy actually set the forest on fire and then they saw the smoke oh my and then God. they were able to come down. Um, number two, yeah, when you get attacked, there's a lot of these uh, videos where the guy is attacked by a bear. Yeah. Oh, and what I realized is that if you get attacked by a bear, okay, let me ask you, what's the best way to survive a bear attack? You're we weird. talked about it. I know, but oh, but oh, I already shared the answer. I forgot. The answer, I think, is uh, just don't make noise and try to bear the pain as quietly as possible <laughs> <laughs> and pretend to be dead. If you decide to turn your back and run, he's going to come after you. Yeah, and the never bear is super that. fast. He can climb and, and chase you down. Oh, that's Even just the thought of that just scares me. And the, the bear's... Uh, mouth is so stanky really i heard its breath when you get bitten by it everyone always comments in those uh, series that they're, i've never <laughs> smelled something so rank <laughs> like that bear because it's the wildlife right oh but they survived the this bear oh yeah yeah some do like they got their like skull bitten oh into God. and oh the only God. reason a lot of them survive is they go unconscious oh from the pain God. And the bear, once you're unconscious, it's neutralized the threat, so it moves on. Oh my god! But knowing you, Katie, so I don't think ever, I can. If you're like, ah, ah, it will keep attacking you until oh you stop god. screaming. So you gotta like. Uh, I told, but then in my mind, I feel like I can jump to the back of the bear and try to run with it. Oh god! This, this, <laughs> okay, can you repeat? What about okay, that? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> This is actually exactly what she told me when we were taking a walk. I was talking about this. And she said, can you please repeat that? But Daniel, say it from there one more time. I want the people to hear this. What thing. if I like... No, no, no. Try but Daniel, I think I can. <laughs> Not that I... But I think I, can I might be attack. able to uh -huh. go to the back of the bear. and. Uh, you think you can hop onto the back of the bear? I don't know. I, it's just in my imaginary mind. I can do anything. <laughs> no, but you said this matter of fact like th two or three times. Have you not seen a bear before? See, this is the problem. <clears throat> I said, the, we need the poo. Yeah. You, <laughs> this is exactly the problem of mainstream media and like uh, in the 90s or 30s. They made bears so cute. We have like plush bears that Katie was sleeping with all of her young childhood years. Then there's Hello Kitty. Wait, is that a tiger? There's a bear. Then they they Hello only Kitty is a cat. Yeah, whatever. And then they had Smokey the Bear doing PSA about how to put out fires. Only you can save <laughs> for some. And bears have become so cute, Katie. There is no way you're gonna jump I onto know. the back now of a bear. You say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One swipe. And half of your body, that flesh is gone. Yeah. Because of that talk we had that day, I had a dream about bumping into a tiger. Oh, <laughs> oh wait, wait, before you go into that dream, another random fact of how to survive wildlife. There's one guy who got bit by an alligator. Oh, my God. A cro sorry, how crocodile, African that? crocodile, about 12 feet thick. Oh, my God. And crocodile, how usually survive? how it kills is that it'll bite you and then it does this 
death spiral. So it starts spinning its oh. its body, and then it starts ripping its flesh. And you, usually you're oh. in water, so once it spins you, it'll drown you. Yeah. And then it'll like keep spinning and rip off flesh, right? So this guy starts spinning in the water, and right? Then. And you think you'd be dead, right? Yeah. But luck. Okay, so how do you think he got out of it? One arm is in its mouth. How did? How does it get out? Come on, Katie. Did he jump on his back and no. play the drums on his no, back? No, no. I have some knowledge now. So okay. I think he punched his eye. Ooh, Katie, very good. <laughs> but that wasn't the case. <laughs> that wasn't the case. It wasn't. What is it? Since his since his mouth or its th- or his thigh was in the crocodile's mouth. Sorry, no, no, it was his arm, and it went all the way up to his, like, close up to oh. his shoulders. So there, oh, so the mouth is a little bit ajar, right? Okay. A little bit open. Yeah. So with his right arm... Oh, he punched his teeth. Or something. <laughs> no, you don't want to punch the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> he put his hand <clears throat> into the crocodile's mouth deeper, his right hand, oh. until the back. Oh. You know, in the back of our mouth, we have that little tonsil, that oh. little thing that comes out. Apparently, crocodile has something, and he yanked on something, and the crocodile's like, "Oh, what is this?" <laughs> and it got so shocked, it opened his mouth and it let go. Oh, but he <clears> lost <throat> his arm, or it's, he survived. It started getting, sorry, <clears throat> it started getting gangrene, um, because it's so filthy, and he survived. He got out, but it started rotting. But he survived oh, after four days. My gosh. Um, so if you get attacked by crocodile, we said we want to go to South Africa and maybe go on a Serengeti. If you end up in the water, Katie, one arm goes in, oh. the other arm reach deep into its throat and then try to hit something. So it's shocked. Yeah, okay, I hope I never have to reuse that knowledge. Yeah, but now you know. Yeah. Um, oh, and one other thing. If you get lost somewhere, it always seems like people... Especially in, especially in the desert, or yeah. in the in the in the forest somewhere. No, no, no. This was the desert, specifically the desert. If you get lost somewhere, the natural tendency seems to be, guys, I'm gonna go look for help. And this one is a fifty-fifty because fifty percent of the cases I saw, the guy who actually went looking for help yeah. after like six days of near death crawling and like. Oh. He finds someone and then he rescues because he sends for help. Yeah. But then the other 50%, if that place was close to a town, by him going somewhere, he walks in the wrong distance. So he ends up dying. Oh. So they say that the... Sorry, guys, I'm going to clear my throat one more time. I, that crocodile thing, I, I feel like someone's putting a hand down my throat. <clears throat> the, the 50-50 decision is, do you stay... Or they recommend if they had just stayed in their original position, like if your car broke down and if you'd have just stayed there, yeah, like help would have found where you are. But since you went somewhere else, yeah, nobody knows where in the world you are, and they end up dying. But it's a but a that's 50/50. really difficult. Yeah, yeah. Don't you like this? Pretty fun, right? Yeah, it's really fun. You summarized it. Really well, I so watch, we don't have to see the episode. I watch so many of these. And then if you're, um, let's say you're going hunting, the universal sign of saying that you're in danger is you do three shots in the air. Oh, bah, it's bah, like the Morse bah. code. Yeah, if you just shoot once, someone might just think that you're shooting, you're hunting. So oh, no so you have to do three times. Three repeated shots. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> <laughs> what a useful <laughs> knowledge. Hey, who knows? Maybe a listener here is doing, planning some trip after COVID, and they find themselves. Wow! Yeah, you never know what these these uh, little morsels of info, random info, may help. Mm. Um, yeah, but that was really interesting. Neighbors, since we haven't talked to you in a while, uh, we'll skip the ad. This one is ad free. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> but go buy some things at Gochichar if you want. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, I think we'll be back very soon. Katie, if you want. Oh, yeah, actually, I, at uh, climbing, you did a little. Oh, here's your, here's your chance to not be. A, to, to self. To brag? No, not brag, but just to About share some, some things that you. Oh, have. yeah, uh, news to share. Well, um, today was a special day because we went to the, our regular gym. 
um, to train at climbing, climbing gym. gym. And then, then guess who we saw? We saw uh, a Seo Chaewon, um, and she is the uh, professional Korean professional climber, and she was actually debuted at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Mm. So we were actually cheering for her, you know. Through yeah, we TV. saw her on TV. She she yeah. actually did. She actually went the furthest in lead climbing. Mm, she, I think she's number one in lead climbing right now. But uh, Olympic climbing is a like combination of like speed, lead, and... Bouldering. Yeah, bouldering. So it's measured a bit differently. Did she get a medal? No, 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 she, she didn't. didn't. Yeah. But, well, she's really young. She's only 18, and given her age, and given that it's her first Olympics, she did really, really well. And I feel like I met a celebrity, and I... <laughs> And I was like, oh my gosh, I want a photo with her. And then like, she was almost like finished um, training and packing her stuff to go home. And so like, Kim Jae-in was there three days ago. Man, I would have liked to see her. Yeah, this place that we go. And the other guy, the, the male um, climber, who also... And, uh, was at the Olympics. He was there the, a few days ago too. Yeah, uh, Chun Jong-won or something. I don't really know her yeah. name completely. But yeah. But it was really cute because she she seemed really young and she just came with, like, maybe her, her school friends, it looked like. They just looked like high schoolers. <laughs> but it's so funny because I asked you to share the accomplishment you did, but you, 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 you don't talk about that. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's your personality. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. I feel like your mom. Katie, what'd you do today? That was awesome. Oh, yeah, I did pull-ups. <laughs> <laughs> like, today I did three pull-ups, mm. officially. And then, yeah, it, this took me a long time to do even one pull-up. I think it took me more than a year to do, oh, well, more than a year, yeah, to do one pull-up. And then I started to pick up some speed, and now I can finally do three pull-ups. No, but I'm really happy for you. Because doing one pull-up, yeah. I think it's it's. it's I mean, very it was tough. really tough for me. Yeah. That woman that we go to the gym with, she's oh, she was doing like um, like uh, finger pull ups, and I was like, oh my god, I've never seen any women in a yeah. gym do finger pull ups. Yeah. And she's really she's much older than us. She's yeah. like it has to be in her late forties or something, right? Yeah. She's hilarious. Uh, yeah, she's really fun, and she was like, "Are you kidding me? I couldn't do a pull up for six years." Yeah, something like that. So I was like, "Wow." Yeah, and and so I'm I'm really happy that you've uh, now are doing some pull ups. Aren't you happy? Yeah, yeah. You went through the hard. Now you're able to do it, and yeah. now it's funny. It took one year to do one pull up. Yeah. And then one month to do three pull ups. Yeah, it's like picking up right? speed. Yeah, the, now the I want to do more and. Now yeah. it's fun, right? Yeah, now it's uh, now it's fun, and it's actually now helping me fun. with climbing too. Like yeah. I can see, like I'm getting stronger, like when I do like the, uh, certain levels. That's the value of hard. If you do hard things, it becomes so much fun. But you just gotta you just gotta go through that hard part. Yeah, Which that one year was up. really difficult, though. Oh my god, <laughs> I know it because you're always kind of ah. Uh, it's just I don't like know why I, I'm doing this stupid <laughs> climbing. Oh, I'd rather go do yoga. It's Pilates. so ironic. <laughs> no, 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 Why is my say? membership done, Daniel? <laughs> it's so ironic because, like, once you start getting good at it, it becomes fun. Of course, but until you are good at it, it's not fun. <laughs> Seriously, and yeah, I, I'm just like nowadays. I'm just keep reminding of that. Like the last year, entire year, I was just like tagging along, Daniel. But then it was just so not fun because I wasn't good. And I and I feel like when you're not good, it's not fun. <laughs> yes, but the whole point. You have to like bear through it, but that's the most difficult part. It took me 1.5 years to bear, bear through it. <laughs> that's what I want to tell people about cooking. A lot of people just think they're not good cooks because they never put time into it. Like cook for yourself for literally for about one year. And you're going to see how much fun cooking is. I feel like a lot of guys are missing out. About what? Cooking? Yeah, because like the yeah. traditional role is like women cooking. And yeah. they think they think they have it good if their wife cooks for them. I think they're actually missing out. I think the person who is always cooking is actually secretly enjoying. 
Now, I, now I don't cook for a. Well, actually, no, cooking for a family too. Like I understand why my mom always like just. I used to tell her like like man, mom, I can't believe you're waking up so much in the morning or at nighttime and you're cooking. She's like, it's not that hard. I actually enjoy cooking. And I never understood that because at my young age, I used to be like, oh my God, it's such a big sacrifice. And she said, stop saying that. It's not a sacrifice. I enjoy it. Mm. It tastes good. Yeah. And you think as the guy, like you're getting taken care of, but if you learn how to cook, you can take better care of your health. You're in control. You can make whatever dish you feel like, you know, like, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, well, I'll, yeah. I think they get the point. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it basically can be applied to any other field. Go through the hard stuff, and it becomes fun, guys. Oh, that, but that hard stuff, that that initial, uh, what do you call it? That initial road, that hill, is uh, really difficult. That's what makes it fun. It was that it was difficult. You just don't realize it. <laughs> That's why walking is not fun. That's why eating at a buffet is not f- fun. Actually, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Guys, we'll sign off here. Yeah, I think it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually one in the morning now. Yeah. So, neighbors, we love you. Thanks for listening in. We'll Thank be back you for soon. listening. Much love.